I think, Judge, we can get going. Okay. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the June 17th, 2021 West Sacramento Planning Commission meeting. We continue to meet via teleconference pursuant to the governor's executive order N-29-20, by which members of the Planning Commission and staff are participating via live video conference to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Members of the public have been invited to watch the meeting via wave cable on our local channel 20, streaming online through the city's website or through the Zoom platform. And one thing to note is the link on the agenda does not work. So if you look on the city's website under item number six, you can click on that and that'll give you a link to access today's meeting via Zoom. Let's see, tonight's agenda and all the agenda item materials are also available on the city's website on the Planning Commission page. All public comments submitted by 5 p.m. via email to the Planning Commission clerk are available for consideration and are posted on the city website so that all commissioners and community members can see the complete text and submittal information. Members of the public participating via Zoom may also provide oral comments. The Planning Commission clerk will note commenters for each item and will notify you when it's your turn to speak. And again, just to reiterate, the link in the agenda doesn't work. So if you're trying to log in via the agenda, please, please look at the agenda reports and click on item number six, and that link should work. Or you can email um, Mr. Tilly. Is there someone people can contact that they could? Yes, I think the, the easiest thing to do would just be to email me. And so my email address is it's first name, last initial. So David T, T is in Thursday at cityofwestsacramento.org. And West Sacramento is all spelled out. So David T at cityofwestsacramento.org. Yeah. So if you're still having trouble trying to access the Zoom meeting, please, please email Mr. Tilly. Okay. And with that, we'll proceed to tonight's agenda. First up is the general administration function, part one, presentations by members of the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the commission. Let's see, Mr. Mearswack, do we have any one for this item? Uh, there's no comments in writing, but there are a few other few people on the call. I'm not sure if anybody wants to speak on item 1A. Let's see. I don't think anybody would like to speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, item 1B, correspondence and staff communications from the Planning Commission Secretary. I don't have any specific uh, correspondence uh, for the commission tonight. Thank you, Mr. Tilly. Um, part 1C, disclosure of ex parte communications. Planning commissioners should disclose any communications they have had on the agenda items at this time. Uh, uh, Commissioner Steer. Yes, um, I did have an opportunity to speak with one of the representatives from uh, the developer's firm. Uh, we discussed some of the uh, details surrounding the request um, to extend the life of the development agreement. Uh, and this is for agenda item number four. Thank you. Thank you. Any other ex parte disclosures? Okay. Seeing none, we'll turn to item. Item two, the consent agenda. Consideration and approval of the minutes from the June 3rd, 2021 commission meeting. Any motion or deliberation on this? I'll move approval. Commission, was that Commissioner DeAnda? Yeah. Apologies, I will second. Second by Commissioner Steger. Uh, Mr. Mearswet, can you do the roll call, please? Commissioner Esquivel? Aye. Commissioner Middleman? Aye. Commissioner DeAnda? Aye. Commissioner Steger? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Berliner? Aye. Yes, Aye. Okay. Motion passes. 
Moving to our regular agenda, we'll turn to item three, public hearing regarding proposed development agreement assignment and assumption and conditional use permit minor modification for cannabis indoor cultivation at 3970 Commerce Drive. I believe this is going, Mr. Hardy. Correct. Uh, good evening, Chair and members of the Commission. Tonight before you is the aforementioned project. Um, there, the minor modification is uh, key um, for their use permit and the DA assumption, um, which they're requesting to be assigned to them. I uh, wanted to briefly, since many of you may not have been um, involved previously, um, in 2016, the Prop 64 passed for legalizing cannabis for recreational um, in addition to medical. Then uh, shortly thereafter, the city revised policies, uh, zoning and locations throughout the city that these businesses could um, apply for and the process of which to do so and requires development agreement for each license type, a use permit for each license type for distribution, indoor cultivation, manufacturing, uh, and labs. In 2018, the state started issuing license for each of the license types. Each division of the state has a different role um, for them, um, and they do contact us to see if the applicant has entitlements periodically, um, mainly the, uh, those go to David to respond. Throughout the process, we have a cannabis committee uh, internally uh, with staff. We require each of the applicants to be vetted. They provide us with the location, the background of the company. Do you operate elsewhere? What kind of license are you seeking? Um, who you are, because you're getting into a, a development agreement with the city and it's a partnership in a way, so uh, contractual. So we want to know who is it? Do you have the means to do so? Once you get through that process, then you can formally apply um, for each of the requested license types that you want. So that's sort of the, the background of how we establish for each individual business, kind of the, the, the quick and dirty background and the vetting process that we've established to go through this. Um, in 2017, Sierra Gold um, submitted for indoor cultivation, distribution, and manufacturing at the 3970 Commerce Drive property. They did receive entitlements for each of those license types in late 2017. In 2018, they applied for a building permit. It was issued. They commenced construction only partially, and uh, essentially the project stalled. Uh, and they eventually sold the project. Um, they did extend their entitlements through a zoning administrator action uh, in 2019 in October, which extends to October of 21, keeping the entitlements alive um, and in hopes to sell those to uh, a buyer. Uh, early 21 this year, Green Leafton went through the vetting process um, and were successful in passing the vetting process. Form formally submitted their DA assumption and assignment agreement request to contractually uh, become part of the agreement. Um, Sierra Gold has already signed away the assignment agreement, um, which was part of the attachment. Um, we did a walkthrough with the applicant and uh, the police department to look at their proposed uh, modifications to the property and the security plan. Uh, they were very, very minor um, changes that would be only internal. Um, police have no issues with the revised plan and security. Uh, staff doesn't have any concerns with the original approval and the minor modification. They are only seeking indoor cultivation. The manufacturing and distribution that was entitled for Sierra Gold will cease uh, 
this October, and the applicant is aware of that. They simply want it and do uh, and pursue the indoor cultivation DA assumption agreement, approve the minor mod or the use permit, which is only changing minor floor plan arrangement for their indoor cultivation operation only. Um, and it will they will update the security plan directly with the police department uh, moving forward. Again, that has been reviewed and vetted by the police department, um, and they have no issues with that uh, proposal. The applicant is here, and they do not have a formal presentation, but they are here to answer any uh, questions of the commission. That concludes my presentation. I am available for any questions the commission may have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Do we have any public comments on this item? I received none. Okay. And I think, so we do have the applicant here if, if the commissioners have any questions of, of Mr. Hardy or the applicant. We do have some other people on the call. I don't know if they want to provide public comment for this item. Hearing none, I think we're okay to progress. Yeah, I think is is Miss Hart here for Miss okay. Allen's? Uh, yeah, Miss Hart is, and Mr. Cooley are here for the um, the next item. Okay. So I believe Miss Lynn and um, the person going by Queenie are here for this particular yes. item. Okay. See, I'm not not seeing any hands from the commissioners. Oh, Commissioner Esquivel. Yeah, just um, an easy question. And, and um, looking at the materials that were provided to us, it, it mentions that the budget and the cost impact that the applicant is paying for all the costs related to this matter via an existing reimbursement agreement. I'm just wondering if the applicant can um, share a little bit more about what, what that means. I'll, I'll actually like to step in on that if you wouldn't mind, Commissioner Escovel. Um, this is a common thing we do with almost all projects. Um, the reimbursement agreement is between the applicant and the city. And what it really establishes is that they put down an initial monetary deposit to cover staff and city attorney time. And then um, should those costs exceed the initial deposit, the um, the applicant continues to be billed at you know the hour, hourly rate based on whatever staff person and city attorney may be working on that matter. So um, that is a, a standard provision. It's, it is nothing um, peculiar to this particular matter. Thank you, that's helpful. Thank you. Let's see, I'm not seeing any other hands. So I'm gonna close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation or motion. Any discussion from the commissioners or, or a motion? So to clarify tonight, you're making a recommendation to the city council regarding the assignment of the existing development agreement um, to this applicant. No terms of that development agreement would change. And then you would be approving the minor modification to the use permit pending city council action on the development agreement. If the council does not act on that development agreement, then the use permit it part is moved. Um, so this is um, standard for development agreements. Planning commission makes a recommendation. City council takes final action on the development agreement. Thank you, Mr. Tilly. And then attachment five, is that what the minor modification is for that floor plan in there? Yes, essentially the floor plan would now just reflect cultivation only and not include manufacturing and distribution um, like it had previously. So it's the same building, the same size, the same location. They'll just do cultivation inside of it instead of cultivation, distribution, and manufacturing. Okay, thank you. A motion uh, to approve based on staff's recommendation. We have a motion to move staff's recommendation. Second. We have a second from Vice Chair Berliner. Mr. Mearswick, can you do the roll call, please? Commissioner Middleman? 
Aye. Commissioner DeAnda? Aye. Commissioner Steger? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Berliner? Aye. Commissioner Esquivel? Aye. Commissioner Sablon? Aye. Staff, so staff will be bringing that matter before the city council um, at, as soon as is practical for consideration on the development agreement based on your recommendation. Thank you. And then with that will turn to item four, the public hearing regarding the proposed second amendment to the West Riverview LLC development agreement. This is uh, Ms. Allen. Uh, good evening, Chair Sablon and members of the commission. Uh, the request before you is a three-year extension of the West Riverview LLC DA, uh, which covers the area of the rivers phase two. Uh, this DA was originally approved back in 2006, and then a first amendment was done to the DA in 2014, and that amendment extended the time of the DA until June 14th of this year. Uh, the extension was done basically due to the housing slowdown caused by the Great Recession. Um, in 2017, uh, the council approved final map 5099, which created two multifamily parcels, a seven acre school site, a parcel for a water tank and pump station, and a designated remainder parcel uh that will eventually be developed with 220 uh residential lots uh the owner is requesting an additional three-year time extension and uh this is being requested uh due to delays that have occurred uh concerning the construction of the water tank and pump station uh those items are a critical piece of the city's infrastructure and the delays were caused uh, due to changes in the scope of work which were mainly uh, due to changes requested by the city uh, and also due to delays stemming from COVID-19. Um, we are uh, recommending approval of the resolution, the PC resolution which would uh, recommend approval to the council. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions for you. Also, the applicant is here if you have any questions of them. Thank you, Ms. Allen. I, I believe we had one public comment that we received via email, and that's also on the website for this project. And do the commissioners have any questions? Um, so I have a question. So what needs to be done within three years? And I guess I'm just wondering, is, is that enough time to get done? What needs to be done? Uh, well, the one thing that definitely needs to be done is the water tank needs to be completed because it is part of our infrastructure, but also there are conditions in the DA that say the remaining homes cannot be developed until the water tank is online. So that's the critical piece that's driving this at this point. And, and Chair Salon, when we open the hearing, uh, we may wish to have the applicant respond to that question um, also. Uh, okay. the, tank, the tank is under construction now, which took a little longer to get to, but at least the construction has commenced. Okay, so they have all the parts now that they need. Uh, yeah, we'll ask Ms. Harder, Mr. Cooley to confirm that when we get to the public hearing phase. Okay, thank you. Let's see. I'm not seeing any hands, so we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Do the applicants want to make any comments or answer? about the uh, water tank. Good evening, Chair Sablon and other planning commission members. Thank you for taking the time to review this. Sorry, let me close these shutters. Not used to the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, not at the office. Um, to answer your question regarding timing um, and the construction of the water tank, that is the main reason we are requesting the extension of time for the reasons that Ms. Allen correctly stated. Uh, we do believe that, um, we, well, we hope and certainly anticipate being completed by September 2022 with the tank. There are possibilities of delays in um, getting additional controls that are required that have to be pre-ordered and they are six to nine months out, but we have tried to build that into the existing construction schedule that, um, that city staff is um, aware of and has been provided. So we've tried to build an even extra buffer time. Um, we figure it, along with staff that if that for some reason additional delays occur, we can come back. But we wanted to also show the city and the resident, the existing residents of the rivers that we had every intention of moving forward as quickly as possible um, and completing the tank and completing the build out of uh, the rivers. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Do any of the other commissioners have questions? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing and then bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Any discussion or motion? Uh, Commissioner Steer. Sure. So um, I just um, quickly went, didn't have any questions, but wanted to say that I, I did appreciate that the development agreement has that dependency built in for the water tower to be completed in support of infrastructure. Um, and that um, generally this this plan, this agreement is aligned with the city's goals and objectives and um, would motion to move forward. Mm -hmm. Clarify, Commissioner Seeger, your motion would be to move the staff recommendation. I apologize. Yes, uh, my, my motion would be to move the staff's recommendation. Thank you. Still new at this. I can second. Yes, we have a second from Commissioner Escobar. Uh, Mr. Mirzak, can you do the roll call, please? Commissioner Seeger? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Berlin? Sir? Aye. Commissioner Esquivel? Aye. Commissioner Middleman? Aye. Commissioner DeAnda? Aye. Chair Saborn? Aye. Okay, that the motion passes. And then, Mr. Tilly, this will be going. Yes, this will also it? need to go to City Council, just like the previous um, item. So we will be scheduling that uh, for as soon as practical can be. Um, obviously tonight was the first step, so we, we would do intend to go in July um, to the city council. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. With that, we'll turn to administration function part two. Any informal discussion? Uh, yes, I just want to let the commission know that based on the fact that we moved both items um, tonight, that we will cancel our next meeting on July 1st. Um, so that everyone can hopefully ease into the long 4th of July weekend. Um, and then we will uh, be back here um, at our second July meeting, July 15th. I think that's the date. So as always, if any commissioners um, become aware they're not able to make a meeting, uh, we'd like to know as, as soon as you know, so that uh, we can um, make sure our alternate commissioner middleman um, gets as much warning as possible. So you can be able to stay in your, in your place. Um, but otherwise, um, I hope everyone can stay cool and um, we will see all each other back here in about a month. Thank you so much, Mr. Tilly. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's all. Good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good night. Okay. Bye.